This is eHobbyist blog, a log of electronics hobbyist activities aimed at city dwellers, retirees, students, and other not so nefarious characters who have limited space, limited money, and limited time. My name is Neil. Welcome. During this video, we will complete work on the breadboard binding post component. I've printed out the panel diagram and cut off just that portion of it that pertains to the binding posts. And now, having centered it up, I'm now taping it securely to the top panel of the enclosure. This has to be securely uh, taped. It can't go moving around as I use it. Before you can do this sort of thing, you have to confirm that the printed out version of this is exactly on a scale of one to one with uh, what it is that was drawn. Now I'm about to use an automatic center punch an automatic center punch. Automatic in the sense that it impacts automatically by putting pressure on the tip of the center punch. It will reach a certain point where a impact hammer is triggered and the tip will be pounded down with a force that is determined by the end cap adjustment. Stronger force for steel, cast iron, lighter's force for uh, aluminum or plastic. And in that sense it's automatic. What I need to do is punch each hole accordingly, uh, lining it up with the center cross lines on the template. Now we align the punch to the cross lines. And to do this, one needs to look at it from two perpendicular directions to make sure it's aligned in both directions before pressing down and getting the punch to punch a depression or dimple in the metal. Now we have a drill bit inserted into an electric drill and I'm tightening up the chuck. Before drilling or sawing or doing anything that could get gunk into your eyes and necessitate a visit to the ophthalmologist, uh, you need to put on eye protection and now I can start drilling. I'm drilling using a a drill bit that is smaller than the smallest size hole and that's going to be the pilot hole uh, for everything to follow. sure we have indeed applied cutting oil to this and keep it well wet with cutting oil. This is tap magic. Uh, the thing is whatever cutting oil is being used it needs to be compatible with aluminum. There are some oils like three in one oil or motor oil or uh, honing oil may not be compatible with aluminum and could achieve the exact opposite effect of clogging everything down and increasing the friction when drilling. Drill bit gets too hot, you burn it, and then ultimately it becomes useless. Alright, these are all the same size pilot holes for everything. Okay, that's that's fine. 
and get this drill bill out, bit out and see if we can't locate the universal bit. Get a magnifier up to see what it is I'm doing here. Okay, uh, this is a uh, universal bit and it is a bunch of gradated diameter bits starting with one eighth of an inch and going all the way up to a half an inch by one thirty seconds of an inch increments called a universal bit. It can be used to drill relatively starting a relatively small hole and going up to as much as a half an inch. It's not quite as precise and neat as regular drill bit, but my experience is that you get less burring around the hole with this kind of a bit. But it is uh, difficult to control relative to a normal drill bit. And so... We'll apply that. This has to be well lubricated. I'm not drilling for a specific size at this point. I'm just making the holes progressively larger, kind of sneaking up on the final hole size, a little bit at a time. Now, I haven't drilled out the hole for the chassis ground because that needs to be drilled out separately and a little more precisely than these larger holes. The larger holes are drilled just to be large enough so that the center contact of the binding post never comes in contact with the enclosure panel. I'm checking the hole size with the hole gauge and taking it to the next step. skipping over the chassis ground. Get these shards off. The shards need to be periodically swept up and one needs to be careful of the shards not getting all over the place. They're dangerous. Okay, now the next size hole. This is about the final size. For most of the binding posts. There's still one larger size to go. I am using different types of binding posts and therefore different diameter holes that are required. Uh, I chose them because I had them or could confiscate them, scavenge them from other pieces of equipment. A binding post in the hand is worth an infinite number of binding posts on an online catalog because I don't have to pay anything for them. And my interest was not in maintaining consistency of binding post types but of ensuring I had different colors for different voltages. Now, here we have the binding post that is going to be used for chassis ground. It is called colored and I need to drill a specific size hole. So I'm taking out a hole gauge for numeric size drill bits and looking for the correct drill bit size. Now we get out the correct bit size. This is a body size drill for a number six screw, which should be just large enough. To tighten up the chuck. and drill the hole for uh, the chassis ground. And 
then we need to check the fit of the, the hole and it's uh, right on. Now we need to uh, deburr the holes and what I have here is a deburring tool. Get a magnifier on it. And what this is is a, a sharp hard steel knife that rotates and pivots around and its purpose is to cut off the burrs. Now there are other ways of doing it that are cleaner than the deburring tool in terms of the end result but this is uh, a relatively fast way of doing, doing it for relatively large holes a quarter inch or larger I would guess and flip it over and deburr the other side And uh, finally, we test fit the holes, and everything kind of comes out okay. Notice that the uh, there are different types of binding posts. Some a little higher than others. Some a little wider than others. But uh, all in all, this is a decent job. In this video. We used an automatic center punch to punch each center crosshair mark on the binding post template. We drilled pilot holes for each binding post. We used a universal bit to progressively enlarge those holes to the proper size. We used a deburring tool to deburr each hole. We uh, test fit the binding posts. In the next video, we will be installing a USB Type A port to be used as a USB dedicated charger. If you like this video and the idea of the channel, click on the YouTube thumbs up icon. If you want to be notified as to when the next video is available, click on the YouTube subscribe button. If you want to suggest future directions or topics, make corrections to published videos, or voice your opinion on related matters, then leave a YouTube comment. It's not all that difficult and I promise to read it. If you want to see supplementary material that cannot be easily presented in video form, such as high-res graphics, vector graphics, files in different formats, lists of references, uh, go to the corresponding website. Until the next time, good day.